Hello and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah and today I have a new uh, knitwear pattern design for you, actually two new patterns. Um, it's a set and it's called Glittering Quartz and I'm wearing the hat. Um, I will show you the matching mitts in just a second. Um, but I'm really excited about this design. It's not one that I had planned uh, for a long time. It was inspiration that struck suddenly and unexpectedly one evening as I was knitting pattern samples and um, or what I thought was going to be pattern samples for another design. And then this idea just kind of got hold of me and I ended up running with it. Um, so normally it takes me longer than um, you know a week and a half or two weeks to go from an initial concept uh, working out a pattern, knitting samples, writing up a pattern and getting them published. But this one was really exciting and I thought it would be a great one to release in time for the holidays, in time for gift knitting perhaps, or just knitting up something for yourself for cold weather time. Um, it is of course December 2nd uh, as this video is coming to you and that means it's pretty cold in Vermont. We are supposed to get a very big snowstorm this afternoon. Um, a foot or more of snow. So it's a good day to stay inside, hunker down, be safe and warm and knit something new. Um, so the Glittering Quartz hat um, was the first uh, iteration of this pattern. Uh, and like I said, I'm wearing a sample. I'll also hold up my second sample that I made uh, for you to see. So it's uh, just got this sort of simple texture on it, but I like the way that the texture um, accentuates the qualities in the yarn. So the Glittering Quartz hat, the name came about because I thought it was a nice compliment to the Bethel hat that I released last year. And this is that hat. So you can, you've seen me wear it here on the channel before. Um, it's made with a very sort of rustically textured, um, it's very soft, it's not rustic in feel at all, but um, sort of a nubbly um, yarn that's got some flex, almost tweed in it. And this is from Green Mountain Spinnery. So with that rustic visual look, um, I thought the granite stitch worked really well, and that's kind of what um, inspired me to call this the Bethel Hat. We can see the Bethel Quarry from our property, and that's where they mine granite. And so that was pretty fitting at the time. And then I was working with this yarn, um, or actually I should say these yarns because it's a combination. And um, this has some mohair content, mo mohair and silk. And it was just sparkling as I was sitting knitting on it. And so glittering quartz um, was the name that came to mind um, because quartz is a another product that comes out of the granite mining process, I thought it would be cool to also choose a name that complemented the Bethel hat. Um, so in a way it's almost a mirror image. Uh, we've got sort of rustic and nubbly yarn here, um, and it has kind of a matte finish, you know, fairly dull finish. And then you have the sparkling, glittering, mohair silk yarn here that really picks up the light. So that's how the name came about. The stitch pattern is one that I'm familiar with. I've knit um, socks by another pattern designer who used a similar who used a similar stitch pattern and Bud has a sock pattern that is based on this. Um, now her sock pattern actually looks more like this. Um, but I like the stitch pattern it's fun to work. And so I modified it a little bit. Um, it's actually based on a Japanese stitch pattern, I believe. And then really discovered that I enjoyed the reverse or the wrong side of the fabric. And so the way the pattern is written, you're going to knit this inside out and then wear it the opposite way. So when you're knitting it, you're working this way and then to wear it, you'll flip it inside out and you'll get this look. And you can see, if you're a, an experienced knitter, you can probably read that worn the way that I have it, 
you would be knitting a lot of working a lot of purl stitches and I know that um, purling a lot a great deal is not everyone's you know favorite way to work um, I personally don't mind it but I understand that for a lot of people um, doing a lot of purl stitches in a row is fairly tedious and so I think the knitting experience is, is more enjoyable if you knit it, knit this hat this way, um, which is the way the pattern's written, and then you're going to flip it inside out. So that's the way it is. Um, but I love these long vertical undulations, um, and then again these sections of pearl in here really set off the yarn. So let me talk about the yarn in a little bit more detail. Um, and I have the some remainders here as well. Um, it's, it's quite on trend right now to knit with a wool yarn of some kind held together with a mohair or mohair blend. And so that's what this is. Um, now I'm not necessarily an on trend kind of person. I don't really aim to be. Um, I just try to work with materials and with designs that catch my eye or that are interesting to me to um, focus on or uh, I guess get draw inspiration from at the time and so I wasn't looking to design something with a mohair held with yarn with wool yarn, but um, I did uh, dye up a bunch of mohair over the summer um, I decided I wanted to play around with this mohair silk thing and see how it took dye see how it was to work with um, Just as an experiment and I had a lot of fun working with it um, It was very interesting to me to see that the way the difference in the way the mohair and the wool yarns um, absorb the dye. The wool yarn um, dyed up much darker in each case than the mohair silk. And the mohair silk really retains its, its kind of sparkly and its white shiny undertone. So each of these mohair yarns um, that I dyed with natural materials does take on the tint of the material but also retains a lot of its glossy nature and kind of unique quality. And of course the silk um, content in this, it's about 30% silk, um, also adds to the shimmer. And then of course with the mohair you do get that intense fuzzy halo. And so when they're held together, um, each yarn kind of contributes its own qualities. And so this is the finished fabric that you get. And you can see that the fabric does have that fuzzy halo. It's also a little bit lighter than just the, the plain wool held by itself. So this, this will lighten it up. But you can still see some of the variegation in the wool yarn, even with that mohair held with it. So I think it's a best of both worlds kind of thing. Um, if mohair's not your not your jam, that's okay. I have a, a suggestion that I'll make for this pattern. It'll be in the pattern notes and I'll also tell you a little bit more about that. But I actually really like that and it's very comfortable to wear. Sorry about that interruption. That was, uh, Rick was outside getting the plow ready so he can plow uh, the snow tomorrow. Um, so sort of what I was saying is that this is very comfortable to wear. Um, I have done extensive testing of that uh, myself in the evenings just popping my sample on my head um, and wearing it around the house and you know I had some concerns um, the fit of this is very close fitting um, and then the mohair I know that you know some people do have trouble with it in terms of it finding it a little bit prickly I don't um, and, and that's a personal thing um, but I don't find this to be itchy at all I can wear this hat for a long time um, and I find it quite comfortable. It's very warm. Um, mohair is uh, well known um, with this halo. It traps a lot of um, heat and a lot of uh, warm air near your skin. So it is quite warm. Um, I will say that this hat, because it's close fitting, if you have a, a very voluminous hair, a lot of hair or a, a sort of a fluffier hairstyle, this may not be a hat that will work for you. Um, I tend to wear my hair long and so this this will stay on my head because I don't have a lot of um, hair pushing up. Um, but I also have very slippery hair and I find that the hat does stay put. So, um, you know, while this, this looks like it might want to slide off my head, it actually does stay in place. 
So just something to keep in mind. Um, I know that this kind of close fitting cap style is not for everyone, but if you like a fitted beanie, um, this might be a good one to try. Um, you can see that this hat is much smaller. Um, these are both considered like a medium size um, hat, but it's much smaller than the Bethel hat that I made uh, and released last year. And that's intentional. The Bethel hat I wanted um, that kind of slouchy fit and I wanted you to be able to put your hair up underneath the hat if you wanted to. Um, with this one, I'm really going for that more fitted look so that it's lightweight and warm. So, um, But you could obviously add more repeats or knit a longer brim if you wanted a larger hat uh, for yourself. Um, so that's the hat. I'm, I'm very pleased with the way that this turned out. Um, in terms of the pattern, I think uh, someone who's knit only a couple of projects could easily take this on. Uh, if you're familiar, familiar with knitting in the round, this is going to be knit in the round. And I have charted uh, the stitch pattern as well as charted the decreases for the top of the hat. So let me show you that. So the, um, the way the pattern is written, you are, you're working actually on this side. I'll flip it inside out. So you're working at this side and you're doing this increase decrease thing every so many rows um, to create that stitch pattern. And then you kind of melt into the decreases for the hat and everything you can see, everything kind of gets closer together and less defined until it melts into a one by one rib at the top. But I show you how to do that to make it look even. Um, and I, of course you could wear it like this uh, if you wanted to with the sort of dimply side out. Um, I just like the graphic nature of this sort of waterfall effect where you get these really long uh, stockinette ridges all the way down the hat. So, but it's your hat and I think it looks nice either way. So, you know, it is basically reversible. It's not going to be um, identically re reversible, but I think it looks good either way. Now, one thing I wanted to mention was that, uh, like I said, if mohair is not your jam or if holding two yarns together is not your preferred way of knitting, um, there is another option for this hat, which is to knit it out of a thicker weight yarn, either a, a heavy sport or a DK uh, weight yarn that has some kind of um, shimmering quality to it. Um, but that does not necessarily have to be mohair. So any kind of a wool blend yarn with a silk component um, or with something like Tencel or bamboo that has a natural shine to it. Um, even something, uh, if, you if you have a glittering or sparkling yarn, something with um, some Stellina or Angelina in your stash, this would be a great way to use up that, um, that skein of yarn. Um, and just something that will, you know, kind of set off the pattern and add a little bit of uh, twinkle to the finished fabric is what we're going for here. So you definitely have range to do that. Um, any of these fibers that I've mentioned, whether natural or artificial, will give you that little bit of uh, sparkle for the texture. So um, go ahead and try that out and see what works for you. So there's the hat. Um, and I like... I like two things. I like matching accessories and I like using up yarn. Um, and so for this set, I wanted to make sure I used up more yarn. This hat came in at, I think, using only 20 grams of fingering weight yarn and about 12 grams of using the mohair lace, um, mohair silk lace weight with it. And so I wanted to use up more yarn. So I also developed matching knits for this pattern. And they look like this when they're on. You start with some ribbing at the bottom. And again, you have this long undulating stitch pattern. You have ribbing, matching ribbing for the thumb and for the top. And it would be fairly easy at this point to also turn this into a full mitten. If you wanted a full mitten, just keep knitting the ribbing and you could decrease slightly and then um, just make your rounded top. You could actually follow the chart for the hat on the top of this mitt. Um, so that would be pretty simple to do. And again, these are nice and warm, very lightweight, nice and fluffy. Hi. <laughs> so there you go. And uh, 
you still have some yarn left over. Um, so for the hat, I'm releasing this in three sizes. Uh, this would be the medium size, and then I have one smaller and one larger. Um, and then for the mitts, I'm releasing that in two sizes. This would be the smaller size. Um, I have sort of smaller hands. Um, and then if you have larger hands, uh, I'll, I'll release a pattern that shows you how to make this a bit bigger. Um, they look ultra skinny when they're not on your hand, but the fabric is very stretchy and it's designed to stretch out and show off the stitch pattern that way. So don't be alarmed when you're knitting if it looks too small. Um, it won't be as long as you're getting gauge. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really pleased with these. Um, the mitts, I have charted the stitch pattern again, the main part of the stitch pattern. Um, the, the thumb gusset is a little bit funny because no two rows on this are exactly the same to the way that you're doing the increases and staying within the ribbing pattern. Um, there wasn't really an easy way to chart that out that made sense. So I decided to just write out the directions, but it's only 12 rows. Um, so even if you, if you're like me and you prefer to read a chart, I understand that. Um, but it's just 12 rows to knit this thumb gusset, so it's not too bad. And you can read your chart for the rest of the rest of the mitt. Um, but what I was trying to say uh, earlier, I interrupted myself again. Um, you know, I have the, I knit two hats and a pair of mitts out of a single um, set of yarns. So it's 100 grams of fingering weight typically. And um, the silk mohair um, usually comes in a 50 gram uh, skein, but because it is um, a lace weight, you get over 400 yards. So it's about equivalent with the amount of yarn in the fingering weight wool, um, which is just over 400 yards as well. So in that single skein set, you're definitely going to have enough to knit a hat and mitts. Um, I knit two hats and a pair of mitts, and I still have this much yarn left over, which isn't quite enough for either a hat or mitts, just under that. But the cool thing is that you could use this extra yarn to make, you know, longer mittens. You could make full mittens. You could make this part longer just by doing some more repeats. Um, you could make the hat longer. You could make a double brim if you want a thicker um, brim here. You could knit twice as many stitches or twice as many rows and then fold it under. Um, so there's a lot of leeway in terms of the quantity of yarn. Um, for modifying these patterns and getting the fit and the sizing that you would like for um, for the items that you're making. So I just want to put that out there. Um, it's also, I think, a great pattern to complement any of those um, wool mohair sweaters that have been popular over the last year. Um, the, the Love Note by Tin Can Knits calls for a fingering weight and mohair held together. Um, there's also one called the No Frills sweater um, that calls for a fingering weight and a mohair held together. And so if you have extra sweater yarn left over, um, even if you don't have a full skein, you should be able to knit at least one of these accessories, if not both. So hopefully it's economical for you. Um, for this initial release, I am going to include both patterns for one price. Um, so a two for one offer for December 2019, and that'll be $5. So normally the hat and the mitts would be sold separately uh, for $5 a piece, but I'm going to sell them separately, but in, include um, either a coupon code or I think in Ravelry I can set it up so that if you have uh, either of these in your cart, you'll get the other one for free. So you'll get both the hat and the mitts um, set for just five dollars the, the pattern for each of these so um hopefully that's an appealing offer for you um, i'd love to see some folks knitting this and um another offer that i have for you that's uh, more limited and i'll explain why is that i am going to be offering some kits um, for the glittering quartz hat and mitt set and the reason i'm doing this is kind of the Going back to the inspiration for, for creating this pattern set, um, over the summer I got to dye um, mohair and fingering weight yarns. Um, these were leftovers from a, a class that I taught on natural dyeing, and I just wanted to play around and see um, how these dyes would, would, you, would work on these um, new-to-me yarns. And the results were really amazing. Um, I was very pleased with them. But I ended up with sort of one of each color. 
for sets. So I wasn't really sure what to do with them. Um, it's too many different colors for me to use as a personal knitting project. You know, I'm not going to put it in a sweater. Um, so I was trying to think of what I could do and, and I thought of, you know, coming up with a pattern for these. Um, and so, so I'm going to offer them as kits, um, but it will be a limited offer and it's kind of a one-time thing. Um, it's never been my goal to become a full-time dyer or natural dye um, maven. And so whenever I do offer um, yarns that I've dyed, it's typically one-offs. It's going to be um, experimental things, uh, leftovers of larger quantities that I dyed for myself, or, um, or things like that. So um, don't be disappointed if you can't get your hands on one of these. Um, there are lots of other uh, really talented dyers out there on the market that offer um, both a fingering weight and a, and a wool mohair. Um, like I said, this has been pretty on trend this year, so it's pretty common to find these in your uh, either your local yarn shop um, or at your indie, a local indie dyer. Um, maybe they have an online store or something like that or a trunk show, um, and you can pick those up. So, Or like I said, perhaps you've been to one of these special events, fiber festival, trunk show, or something like that. You may have bought these and then not really known what to do with them. Um, so here's one idea. So um, the kits I'll be offering um, are going to look like this. They're going to come in our, our nice little gift boxes that we use. Um, so it's actually a cupcake holder box. Um, and I'll, I'll line them up for you. So there's your, your skein of fingering weight and mohair silk ready to go. Um, and these kits are also going to come, so they'll come with both patterns, they'll come with the yarns that you need, and they're also going to come with um, one of our signature lotion bars, um, which are made with all natural Vermont ingredients. And here's mine that I've been using regularly, so it's just, it's a push-up uh, kind of thing, like a, like a chapstick, it's just larger, and that's what it looks like. We use tallow, lard, and beeswax are the main ingredients. And then it's just a robot formula, so you can apply this before you sit down to knit, or after you finish the dishes, or before bed, whenever you need a little extra moisture on your hands. Um, I like this formula because it's very skin compatible, and so it doesn't sit on your skin. It actually absorbs in really well and provides some extra protection. And I use um, essential oils uh, to scent lightly. Um, and there's also an unscented option. So hopefully that's appealing. Um, and these kits will be uh, $75. Um, they're going to be available at the Bethel Holiday Pop-Up Market, and that's the first two weekends in December. Um, I do have a little bit in more information about that on our website, so I'll include a link below this video. If you are local, local-ish, New England-ish area, if you're driving through, um, Bethel is just off of uh, Interstate 89, so it's pretty easy to get to. And it's also kind of a thoroughfare for going um, east-west through the center part of the state. So if you're on your way to Killington for some skiing or, you know, up here, um, visiting friends for the holidays, um, I hope you'll stop by. We're gonna be at the Blossom Block and Arnold Block building, buildings right in the main part of Bethel Village. Um, and that's where I'm gonna have these kits for sale. So let me take you through the different colors I'll have. And um, as I'm doing that, I also wanna mention that although I'm not going to list these for sale on the website, I've decided that that is you know, it's four or five extra hours of work to photograph everything properly and um, write in full descriptions on the web page. And so for a one-off um, kind of product, I'm just not willing to invest that kind of time. I really don't have it. Um, but if you want to buy one of these and you're not going to be local, just send me an email or send me a DM on Instagram and we can work something out. Um, I'm happy to ship these, that's not a problem. It's just the fancy photographing and getting everything listed in an online shop is a little bit more work than I can put in um, for a one-off uh, item. So, that being said, um, here are the kit colors. I showed you um, the sample that I had wound up in this box, and it's kind of a greenish hue. And I have one other that, that's the same um, and then everything else is, is just individuals. 
So here's that yarn again, and it's, it's a light green, um, kind of a light sage green. This was dyed with Black Eyed Susan, um, and I've named the kits based on uh, colors of quartz. Um, quartz comes in many different natural colors, depending on what minerals are trapped inside the, the rock when it forms. And so this one is um, called Vermarine, which is a, a natural green quartz. And I think it's really pretty. My, my favorite, actually. Um, so there's that one. Um, for you yellow fans out there, we have two versions of yellow. We have a very bright yellow. This would be a citrine. And this is dyed with um, Queen Anne's Lace. It, it has a hint of green to it, and I think you can see it there um, in that light. But it's a very bright, fun yellow. If you enjoy bright colors, this would be a great one to add to your stash. And then we have a slightly darker yellow as well. This was dyed with uh, Osage Orange, which is the bark of a tree, and it has more of a gold tint. So if I hold up these together, you can kind of see the difference. I hope. So you can see these have more of that goldy orange color, and then this one is the brighter um, Queen Anne's Lace. Very pretty. And I'm showing these in skein form because I haven't wound them all yet, but they're all going to be kitted up and wound up into balls ready to knit for you. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have Walnut. Um, and this would be related to Smoky Quartz. Smoky Quartz usually has a brown kind of a tone to it. And I love the richness of this. It's kind of a tawny, tawny brown. It has a hint of red to it. Very pretty. And the mohair and silk really took this color beautifully. Still sparkly, but it has more of a rich chestnut kind of tone to it. So those are going to look really nice together. With pink, of course, what I'm wearing. Um, my sample, I used a matter to dye this. And I don't have matter, but I do have a, a cochineal, which is a slightly brighter pink. Um, this pink has a little bit more of a purpley or bluish undertone to it. So this one has kind of an orange undertone, the matter, and then in the cochineal you get more of that purpley, almost a baby pink, um, which I know is a lot of people's favorite color. So very nice, very light, very feminine. And then lastly, we have logwood, which is a dusty purple color. This was a logwood vat that had been sitting in my garage for years, actually stored in jars. And I was impressed that it dyed up so well. It's definitely a lavender kind of a color. It's showing a little more pink on this monitor. Um, but it's very pretty. It's sort of a dusty, a dusty gray purple. And again, the two yarns together, I think, are just so nice. So those are the colors I have. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I forgot one more. <laughs> There's this one, which I'm calling Milky, um, because it's as close to white as I have. This one is dyed with um, a jewel weed, uh, which gives kind of peachy, orangey tones. This was the leftover um, exhaust dye vat that I had from another dyeing session. And so that that dye that I used on another yarn came out more of an intense tangerine color. But I, I really enjoy um, exhaust vats and working with you know lighter pastel colors and, and using up all the color that you can get out of something and making these beautiful subtle tones. I think that's pretty. So if you like to wear peach or if you like to wear um, you know, different shades of orange, that might be the color for you. So that's all of them. 
Um, and like I said, I, I don't have the time and energy to, to post these online. Um, but if you wanted one, um, just contact me on email or on Instagram and let me know. And we can definitely work something out. And again, these will also be available at the Bethel Pop-Up Market um, the first two weekends of December. It runs uh, Friday afternoons, all day Saturday, and then um, a good portion of Sunday, I think 9 to 3 um, on both of the first two Sundays in December. So, um, yeah, I hope you'll be able to come down and check out the Bethel Market. There will be a lot of other um, people there that hand make all kinds of interesting goods. Um, woodworking, pottery, um, sewn items for gifts, um, all kinds of treats and goodies and baked things, um, which are always nice for the, the person you don't know how to shop for. You know, everybody eats food, so um, you can come get some nice handmade snacks. And thank you for watching. Um, I really appreciate uh, the new viewers especially. Um, if you're coming in or if you've been watching the last couple of weeks, um, it's really been great to have you and see our audience growing a little bit. And uh, why not tell a friend if you if you like our channel, um, if you like the topics that we cover here, and um, you find them interesting or educational, I encourage you to to let somebody know that um, that you think would would enjoy these topics as well. Uh, we'll be back next week with a completely different uh, subject matter. We're going to talk about Rick's latest homebrew recipe, so we'll be sharing that. So tune in next week for that, and um, I guess just have a really nice uh, kind of holiday prep season. I know that um, this is the busiest time of year for a lot of people, um, getting ready for the holidays, getting things organized, thinking about gifts that you're going to make or purchase, um, and please do shop local and shop small wherever you can. It really makes a huge difference. Uh, your, do your dollar goes a lot further and it also um, tends to stay in, in a community when you spend locally. Um, so I encourage you to do that where you can. And most importantly, I hope you can take some time for yourself this holiday season. Uh, not be too overcommitted or um, spread too thin in terms of your calendar and your commitments. Take some time to make something for yourself or someone you care about and just enjoy and relax and enjoy this time of year. Thanks so much and we'll see you soon.